Hey coders and welcome to another JavaScript for complete beginners tutorial video. We're going to be talking about arrays in this video. All right, so let's go ahead and look at an abstract way to view what an array is. To start off, an array is just some type of object that holds a collection of other things. So if I were to just go ahead and declare some random variable called array or ARR and set it equal to, now this is kind of like pseudocode, but just an empty object which has a bunch of different locations to put other objects. So if you see here, imagine that this is just, I don't know, one of those like pill boxes where it has Sunday through Saturday. And then in each location, you can put something inside of it. So first we refer to each location or slot as an index of the array. So in this case, this would be index zero. This would be index one. This would be index two etc. until you get to the array.length minus one. So again, an array is a collection of arbitrary things. So for instance, if we wanted to put something inside slot one, we could say array of index one is equal to C. So here would now become C. And then if I were to change this to something else, such as a number, just go ahead and say five. This up here would then become five. And just note that we can store anything that you can typically, typically store in a variable inside of an array index. So we could store another array inside index zero if we wanted to. We can store an object in index two. We can store a string like we just saw, or maybe even like a double or a float. But basically, this is just to show that an array is basically a collection of things that you can put into. Now in JavaScript, an array is dynamic in length. So if we wanted to add another element at the end, we can do that with array.push. And we'll see that later in the code example. And we can also remove stuff dynamically from the array. So if we wanted to remove this first element here, we can do that with array.splice or array.shift, in which once you do that, all the other indexes are going to be shifted over one. So that's the basics of array. One thing I'll show again is looping through the array, but not with code. So again, if I were to add in another slot, and let's go ahead and change all of these to actual values. So I'll say one, two, five. This is index one, zero, one, and two. So if I, let's say I wanted to loop through this array and sum up all of the values in it. Well, if you remember in the looping section of this series, we can define a variable such as like i, which is equal to zero. So i refers to the index. And then we can do something with the array. So array of i, do something. And then we just keep on looping over and make i go up by one. So i plus plus at the end. And then here we can say while i is less than array.length. I know we talked about summing it, but we'll just say set everything equal to zero. So again, we start off at zero. We set the array of index zero to zero. So this will come here and set this to zero. We increment i to one. So then i, instead of you pointing to zero, it point to one. We do the same thing, i is equal to, let me fix that, that shouldn't be here. Cool, so then i is now one, we set the array of index one to zero, we increment i. So i is now point to two, we set array of index two equal to zero, and then we continue to increment i until we reach the end of the array. So array.length minus one or i less than array.length. So this will become zero and this will become zero. So the main takeaways from this little pseudocode diagram write up on the whiteboard is that you can access the number of elements in the array with array.length. The array is indexed from zero, starting at zero, going all the way to array.length minus one. We can remove stuff from the front of the array so we can splice this which would shift all the indexes. 
we can move from the end, which doesn't affect any indexes, and we can assign or clear, like for instance, this could be null, any index in the array to whatever arbitrary JavaScript value that we want. So let's go ahead and look at some code examples. All right, so let's go ahead and start writing some arrays in JavaScript. So the first thing I need to do is, like in the whiteboard example, let's go ahead and declare a blank array. This is how you do it in JavaScript. You do var, the name of your array equals, and then these empty brackets. So you do the opening square bracket followed by the closed square bracket. And then if I wanted to actually have it defined, so like right now this is an empty array. If I wanted to have it defined with some pre-existing values, I could do so by just passing them. So in this case, we have an array with four values, five, five, two, and three. And then to demonstrate all those different indexes that we mentioned, if I were to print out index zero, one, two, and three, go ahead and run this at the bottom. We see it prints out five, five, two, and three. And that's because again, each index starting from zero to array.length is equal to these values. And then to also demonstrate if I were to loop through the array, so again, starting at zero, go until the end of the array, array.length, let's go ahead and just print out array of the index that we're currently at. So I'll remove those console logs, and I'll rerun our program. And note that it prints out the exact same thing because now we're just looping through the array and printing out the console of that index on line seven. <clears throat> so that's how you declare an array in JavaScript. This is basically how you loop over the array. So you should probably have this memorized by now if you have already watched the looping part of the series. So now we can also show how do you push something new to the array. So in JavaScript, the keyword push is attached to the array prototype. So we can do arr.push and give it some arbitrary value like 10. Now if I were to save this and run this, it should push 10 to the end of our array. So now we have 552310. Um, if we wanted to, let's say, overwrite values, we can do that like so. So I'll say the first index is going to be equal to null and the second index is going to be equal to null. So again, run this, we get null, five, null, three. And then removing from the, the, the front element of the array, we can do array.shift. So now it should remove that first five. So I'll go ahead and say run that, and we see that it removes the first five. We only have five, two, three. We can also do array.splice give it the index you want to remove, and then give it the length that you want to remove. So again, say at index zero, remove one element. Again, we get five, two, three. All right, so we covered adding to the array, removing from the array, removing particular elements or indexes from the array, pushing to the end of the array, overriding values inside the array, looping over the array. Um, I guess the last thing we can kind of go over is an array holding other things inside of it. So for instance, like we mentioned in that tutorial, an array can hold an object, it can hold an array, or it can hold whatever primitive that you want. So again, I'll just go ahead and run this to demonstrate that it can print out those objects that we have. So if we wanted to go ahead and attach something to that object, so we can say the object on line six, which is array index of one. Go ahead and attach some property. So I'll say name is equal to Bob. And now when I run this, we see that the object at index one now has the property Bob on it. And then also to demonstrate adding something to the array embedded on line seven, we can say array index two, because remember this is zero, one, two dot push and we're going to push a string to this array right here on line seven so now if i were to run this we see that we added hello to the array that was embedded in our array so this is kind of important to understand because later on when we do 2d arrays or more complicated nested arrays it's it's good to know that an array can hold another array and how to like operate on that so for instance if i wanted to just print out this hello string 
I could do so by just saying console.log array of index 2, which again will grab me the 7, and then give me the first index of that array that was returned, which would be whatever value is inside of this. So see that it prints out hello here. So that's basically a lot of the majority of the basic functions that you're going to be using for arrays. Um, they'll get more complicated and there's a lot more additional useful helper functions attached to the array prototype that you can use. But I think we covered the basics of what you need to know to hit the ground running to start creating your own applications, your own scripts down the road. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the introduction to arrays in JavaScript for complete beginners. If you enjoy this video, go ahead and give it a like and a thumbs up and please subscribe. All right, thanks for watching.